Damn, I knew. And Corey Campbell. Murder of a murder. They're hot. In station one. So here we have Mr. Ran Rat. And we're wrapping it around baking soda. So we just wrap it around baking soda. So right now, I'm going to go in and stick the baking soda in there to my space. And uh, let's put that to the side there. take this white vinegar and put it in the baggie. And and now we're going to shake it up. The CO2 is going to inflate the bag. Then the CO2 comes from the reaction that's taking place between the white vinegar and the baking soda. So we we'll set it up here so you wouldn't have to watch the whole thing regular speed because it takes a long time and the gas is going to fill its container which will make the bag poop out because gas will fill their container to the brim and particles are going to move in rapid straight line motion because that's what gas used to do and you know, I'm still shaking it and uh that is what the bag is looking like. Completely inflated. All inflated like and, and such. Shake a shake a. Station two. So in this station, we had a plunger that we filled up with 25 milliliters of air. After we contained this air by capping it off, we push down on the plunger, creating 20 milliliters of air. By d pressing down on the plunger, we increase the pressure, but decrease the volume, as according to Boyle's Law. This is possible because according to the kinetic molecular theory, gases are mostly made up of empty space, so that they are able to be compressed. When the plunger is released, thus decreasing the pressure, it bounces back to its original volume. Station 3. So in this station, we uh, put this test tube full of water, and then we put the bag in this and created a seal. When we turn it upside down, the seal will stay in place and the water will not fall out. See, it doesn't fall out. Still not falling out. Now we filled it half with air and half with water. We noticed that when we filled it with half air and half water, that the seal was considerably stronger. This is because gases exert pressure in all directions. Now, when it's filled only with water and we put it under water, we remove the seal. Just a second here. water level stays the same, even if we move it up and down in the water, like so. Now it's half filled with air and half filled with water. When we remove the film, the density of the air is lower than that of the water, so the air will stay in the test tube even when we submerge it nearly completely in the water. Station four. So in this station, we used baking soda and vinegar once again, like station one, to create CO2 gas. And after the reaction that you'll see shortly, we'll use this carbon dioxide to put out a flame that is lit on the candle. Watch that chem fizz and science action. Oh yeah. In order for the CO2 to put out the flame, it needs to cut off its oxygen supply because fires need oxygen to burn. This can happen because it's a proven fact that gases, like carbon dioxide, are fluids and their kinetic energy is directly related to their Kelvin temperature. So the flame increased the energy of the CO2 molecule. Now it's time for station Bow. So this is our beaker here and we're going to submerge it in the water. This is to show that the density of air is less than that of water. When Michael turns it upside down, the air is going to float to the top, 
which will show that air is less dense than water. See the bubbles coming up right there. And that is a cup of water now. So we have two balloons filled with air and water. And we're going to place these balloons side by side in two containers of water. And the one with air is going to float because air has a lower density than water due to the fact that gases are mostly empty space. Station six. So we're going to take this can and fill it with water. Now we're going to put it on the heat. This will make sure that the water goes to boil and we're going to wait until it's steaming. That way we know it's done. We're going to fast forward here for a little bit. And after a little while, the can began to steam, notifying us it was time to throw it in the ice water. This is what happened. And it was able to happen because according to the kinetic molecular theory, the kinetic energy of a gas is directly proportional to its temperature. So when the pressure outside the can was greater than the pressure inside, it imploded. Thus proving once again gases are compressible. And finally, station seven. These are two flasks next to each other. The one on the right has a stopper in it and iodine in the bottom. The iodine has sublimed into a purple haze in the container. This shows that iodine and any other gas that sublimes, or just any gas, will fill its container completely. So by doing these seven labs, we were clearly able to see hands-on the six properties of gases and all five statements of the kinetic molecular theory in real-world use. The end.